a noon time recollection. We know, O oh Lord of life and love, about the need. Touch our hearts anew with love, that we may we too may love and give. Greetings, everyone. My name is Daniela, and I'm part of a wonderful group called 2025 Initiative. Today, we will be reflecting on the third ray. And um, before we go into the subject matter, I would like to us to remind ourselves that amongst um, other magical skills we have, um, we also have humor and laughter. <clears throat> so let's get serious and talk about the third ray. We are told that special virtues of the third way include wide views on all abstract questions, sincerity of purpose, clear intellect, capacity for concentration on philosophical studies, patience, caution, absence of the tendency to worry himself or others over trifles, vices of the ray, intellectual pride, coldness, isolation, inaccuracy in detail, absent-mindedness, obstinacy, selfishness, overmuch criticism of others. Virtues to be acquired are sympathy, tolerance, devotion, accuracy, energy, and common sense. This is the ray of the abstract thinker, of the philosopher and the metaphysician of the man who delights in the higher mathematics, but who, unless modified by some practical ray, would hardly be troubled to keep his accounts accurately. His imaginative faculty will be highly developed, or in other words, he can, by the power of his imagination, grasp the essence of a truth. His idealism will often be strong. He is a dreamer and a theorist. And from his wide views and great caution, he sees every side of a question equally clearly, which sometimes paralyzes his action. He will make a good businessman. As a soldier, he will work out a problem in tactics at his desk, but is seldom great in the field. As an artist, his technique is not fine, but his subjects will be full of thought and interest. He will love music, but unless influenced by the fourth ray, he will not produce it. In all walks of life, he is full of ideas, but is too impractical to carry them out. One type of this ray is unconventional to a degree, slovenly, unpunctual and idle and regardless of appearance. If influenced by the fifth ray as the secondary ray, this character is entirely changed. The third and the fifth rays make the perfectly balanced historian who grasps his subject in a large way and verifies every detail with patient accuracy. Again, the third and the fifth rays together make the truly great mathematician who soars into heights of abstract thought and calculation and who can also bring his results down to practical scientific use. The literary style of the third ray man is too often vague and involved, but if influenced by the first, fourth, fifth or seventh rays, this is changed. And under the fifth, he will be a master of the pen. The curing of disease by the third ray man would be the use of drugs made of herbs or minerals belonging to the same ray as the patient whom he desires to relieve. The method of approaching the great quest for this ray type is by deep thinking on philosophic or metaphysical lines till he is led to the realization of the great beyond 
and of the paramount importance of treading the path that leads thither. Going further into, the, into one of the qualities of the third ray, I would like to share with you a quote from a treatise on white magic, page 368. To those who wrestle, strive, and hold on, the joy is doubled when the materialization comes. The joy of contrast will be yours. For knowing the past of darkness, you will revel in the light of fruition. The joy of tried and tested companionship will be yours. For years will have proved to you who are your chosen associates. And in community of suffering will come the strengthened link. The joy of peace after victory will be yours. For the tired warriors, the fruits of achievement and rest are doubly sweet. The joy of participation in the master's plan will be yours. And all is well that associate you closely with them. The joy of having helped to solace a needy world, of having brought light to darkened souls, of having healed in some measure the open sore of the world's distress will be yours. And in the consciousness of days well spent and in the gratitude of savage souls comes the deepest joy of all. The joy a master knows when he's instrumental in lifting a brother up a little higher on the ladder. This is the joy that is set before you all, and not so very far ahead it lies. So work, not for joy, but towards it, not for reward, but from the inner need to help, not for gratitude, but from the urge that comes from having seen the vision and realization of the part you have to play in bringing that vision down to earth. Reading this quote, <clears throat> I saw an image of sparks of light, each re representing a member, knowing or unknowing, knowing of the new group of world servers. In my mind's eye, these sparks are more or less evenly distributed all over the world, in all the environments of human activities, working in all the different disciplines or call them professions. Like undercover agents, these sparks of light illuminate things around them, reaching further and further into the density of everyday life. This image, which is more of a movie, then changes into a question. What would happen if thus isolated sparks of light get into contact with each other? On the ground of daily living. What would happen if a quantum physicist started speaking with a medical researcher? What if they added a shaman into their collaboration? What nowadays seemingly hopeless situations will find their cure? And so my movie continues with celebration. <clears throat> New group of world servers weaving the world into unity. And before we go into the meditation proper, I would like to share with you yet another quote, this time from a book called 40 Rules of Love. One of the rules of love says, patience does not mean to pace passively endure. It means to be foresighted enough to trust the end result of a process. What does patience mean? It means to look at the thorn and see the rose, to look at the night and see the dawn, 
Impatience means to be so short-sighted as to not to be able to see the outcome. The lovers of God never run out of patience, for they know that time is needed for the crescent moon to become full. Look at the thorn and see the rose. Look at the night and see the dawn. And invite us now to let to enter our silent meditation.
<clears throat> Just before we voice the great invocation, I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Happy Advent of Light on our beautiful planet. And extend a blessing coming from the book, A Course in Miracles, lesson number 97, which says, Spirits are we, holy children of God, free of all limits, safe and healed and whole, free to forgive and free to save the world. The Great Invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. 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 Thank you.